Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the channel. As always, thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a few. My name is Rich, and we usually talk drones and tech, and sometimes mobile living in an Airstream. Today we're talking more drone stuff, and unexpectedly, I'm doing a second video back to back, so I popped up a new video just yesterday on a new construction site progression project that I'm working on. If you haven't seen that, check it out after. But today, I wanted to quickly talk to you about the LAANC system. So this is an automated system for getting permission to fly in controlled airspace. There are several vendors out there that offer applications that will help you do this. And yesterday was the big day where hobbyists could start using the Lance system. I totally forgot about it. I actually had several, um, several regular subscribers here on the channel get in touch with me yesterday, drop me private emails through my website, azdrone.net, and they were wondering, hey, Rich, what's going on with Lance? Quite honestly, it slipped by the radar screen on me. So this morning, we're gonna quickly talk about Lance, but let's go for a little flight first. All right, and welcome back everybody. So just a little more video from the work that I've been doing over the past couple weeks. I hope you enjoyed that. And so now let's talk about Lance real quick. I'm sure that every channel out there has something on it. Normally, I don't really report on drone news, but since I got so many questions yesterday um, from regular visitors to this channel, I said, okay, let's put something together real quick for everybody. Um, I know we've all got our favorite channels and I appreciate the fact that some of you have started following this channel regularly and you're looking for more information here. Uh, thanks for the faith in me. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, just like you, I'm, uh, I'm into drone flight. It's not just business. It's also for fun. I do enjoy the hobby side of flying and we've got some amazing places here in Arizona to fly and we're going to talk about that in a few as well. Um, so. Now hobbyists can utilize the Lance system to get permission to fly in controlled airspace. Where I'm at in Prescott, Arizona, we've got some amazingly beautiful locations. One of my favorites is the Granite Dells, and if you've watched this channel for a while, you've seen some of the Granite Dells. The Granite Dells is in controlled airspace. We have KPRC here. That is the um, Ernest Love Field. It's the Prescott Regional Airport. And of course, the airport's within five miles of the Granite Dells. So therefore, you need permission to fly there. Now, hobbyists can access that permission through the Lance system. So I'm going to pick up my iPhone here. And um, so I'm actually looking down at the iPhone. I'm logged into Kitty Hawk right now. Um, this is one of my most used applications at this point. Kitty Hawk has been just an absolute gem for getting, um, for getting permission through Lance. And Lance is now available on Kitty Hawk. For hobbyists as well. So this is the Kitty Hawk interface. Um, one of the things that I really like about it, there are other applications out there for your smartphones, but Kitty Hawk gives you a ton of information. Number one, check out the grid. So it's pretty clear where we can and can't fly. Um, those green areas, we definitely can. The yellow areas are different elevation. And right now we're seeing my location where I'm recording from. Down below the map, we've got, um, we've got some great information. We've got some weather information, uh, our wind speed right now, gusts, visibility, um, humidity, cloud cover. So it's going to let us know, you know, you can at a glance see if we've got good weather, bad weather, and what we want, you know, what we're doing here. So down below that, we've got prepare for flight. So we've actually got flight deck, we've got uh, checklist items, and we've got items for if we are recording with Kitty Hawk. I actually don't fly from Kitty Hawk. I just use it to register my flights. So the primary one that I'm using and that most people are going to be interested in is authorization and maps here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on authorization. And right now we see a location and we see, okay, KPRC, Class D airspace. If I click on that, there is an option here. Once I've clicked on that, you see get authorization. So we've got airspace and we've got weather. So there's our weather so we can review whether or not we should be flying today. I'm going to go back to the airspace and that get authorization checkbox, I'm just going to tap on that. 
Now here's what's new and exciting. Here's the big change for, for you hobbyists. Part 107, I'm a part 107 pilot, so I'm going to fly under that for almost everything that I do. And below that, we have section 44809, recreational. And if you select on recreational now, it, it uh, pulls up first, how high do you need to fly? As you can see on the grid, I am in an area where I can only fly up to 150 feet above ground level. Now, if I were to submit this one, they can approve me up to 150 feet above ground level almost instantaneously. So when you set the app up, when you actually set up the Kitty Hawk app, you're going to put your information in there. You're going to put if you're flying part 107 or if you're a hobbyist, you're going to put information about your drone. You're going to give them a lot of data, um, including your cell phone number. And when you get approval through Kitty Hawk, you automatically get a text message. So when I'm out on a construction site, um, if I need to extend my time, I, I can just jump into Kitty Hawk. I can select part 107 and then I can pop in the altitude that I'd like. Now, if I'd like an altitude outside of that, that is possible. But doing a submission like that is going to take days to weeks. It's not going to be an instant approval. But if you work within the zones that Kitty Hawk gives you and says you're in a 150 foot um, and that's going to be your max flight, you know, your max elevation for that flight, you're most likely going to get your approval very quickly in the form of a text message on your smartphone. And then it's there for your records that you did do the right thing, that you did go ahead and register the flight through Lance. And so if any questions come up, you're covered because you're, you're actually doing what they want you to do with the system. So, so always make sure if you're a hobbyist and you are in controlled airspace, that you use one of these apps to get your authorization to fly before you fly. Don't do it after the fact. Do it before the flight starts. All right. So now I hit next on this and it's going to ask me, you know, when do I want to do this? Because I could plan days or weeks in advance and I can tell it how long. So it can be today's date, how many minutes. And then we have our notes. Go ahead and read those notes. It's important to. And then we hit next again. And we can actually submit our flight. So I'm just waiting for the network to catch up. So eligible for auto approval. And now I would go through the information, hit next, and follow the instructions. Now, in my case, um, when I'm doing this for, for my part 107, there are a couple other questions and a couple other checkboxes that come up for me. A few more questions, you know, giving them my information, giving them my certi certification number from... Um, from the FAA. So uh, there's a couple of extras. I also put my registration information for my drones um, into Kitty Hawk as well. So if you haven't tried out Kitty, Kitty Hawk, give it a whirl. It's a great app and it's incredibly powerful because it goes beyond just getting your, your Lance approval. Uh, I love the fact that it's got the weather features in there. Uh, it gets very windy here and you know we have some interesting weather in the high desert. So uh, Kitty Hawk is has become my go-to app for Lance notifications for quite a while now. Haven't mentioned that on the channel. That was going to be in one of my upcoming favorite apps for 2019, but we'll get to that later. Now, second thing, while we're utilizing the Lance system, I want to look over at the screen. Um, we also still need to keep in mind that we do need to check the aeronautical charts. And so we're looking at the Prescott area on Sky Vector right now. So Sky Vector is another go-to website. And also on Sky Vector, I just wanted to show you, is we've been having some major fire activity here. And you see this red block right here? I'm going to click on that block. And that block has a TFR on it right now, temporary flight restriction. And that is because we've been having a very sizable forest fire in the area. So it's always good to double check, to take a look at Sky Vector, um, to contact uh, 800 WX Brief and also to utilize the Lance system. So we need to cover our bases and make sure, you know, several ways that we're flying where we should be and um, not getting into the wrong airspace or not getting into these flight restricted areas. So I literally have a client site that is within this TFR right now. So I clicked on the TFR and I flew for a client just several weeks ago who's building a new home in this area and go figure, now there's a forest fire in the area. So 
I hope everything goes okay for her property and that uh, everything is safe and sound out there, not only for her property, but also for the fire crews that are out there. So always make sure to check out TFRs as well, everybody. And I don't know how many TFRs show up um, on Kitty Hawk, but I'm pulling Kitty Hawk back up one more time, and I just have to do my little sign-in. And I'm going to zoom out on this because I want to show you that sure enough on Kitty Hawk right now, we do have that TFR area, and that's the red block right here. So even with Kitty Hawk, they are getting that temporary flight restriction up. I would still double check on other maps as well, just to be cautious. Um, it's always better to play it safe. Okay, we're going to shift gears away from this. So if you want a full Kitty Hawk tutorial, let me know. Um, I think it's pretty obvious. The steps are pretty straightforward. So I think that you can do this on your own. But if you would like to see a tutorial, let me know. Also, Kitty Hawk has a website and you can actually sign up on the website here and you can submit your flights through the website as well. So that's that's absolutely awesome. Mm -hmm.